This is Matthew Pendergast from Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. The participants of the National Conference on the Standalone Law for Combating Trafficking in Persons listen as a list of figures is read. Number of victims identified. Number of prosecutions. Number of convictions. While statistics are notoriously elusive surrounding such a complex issue, Mongolia is a source and more recently a destination country for victims of human trafficking. At root, this is an issue of basic human rights, in which people are forced into conditions of slavery, undergoing humiliating physical and psychological abuse at the hands of their perpetrators. Victims of this crime can range from adolescent girls sold into prostitution to able-bodied men forced into labor for little or no pay. It was previously understood that human trafficking happened just for the purposes of sexual exploitation. But the cases which is occurring in Mongolia during the last years shows that the other types of uh, human trafficking like forced labor, fraudulent marriage, child exploitation are happening also in Mongolia. A struggling economy, high unemployment and poverty are key contributors to the development of a human trafficking industry in a country. People desperate for a job can often fall prey to the schemes of traffickers who exploit those situations. Often, unfortunately, you can't just rely on government or the politicians to be wise and come up with some solutions and be proactive. It's usually under the pressure of the um, public. And that's exactly where NGO community and civil society can help. This conference was organized by the Mongolian Women Lawyers Association with support from the Human Security Policy Studies Center, or HSPSC, and the Asia Foundation. It is the result of Mongolian NGOs, such as the HSPSC, working in tandem with government officials and legislative working groups to research, gather feedback on, and draft a single standalone law on human trafficking, focused on prevention and victim protection. Mongolia is listed as a Tier 2 country in the U.S. State Department's 2010 Trafficking in Persons, or TIP, report, which places it with countries whose governments do not fully comply with the Trafficking Victims Protection Act's minimum standards, but are making significant efforts to bring themselves into compliance with those standards. In 2008, the Mongolian Criminal Code was amended to include an article that is more compliant with the UN definition of trafficking. But legal professionals say that Article 113, as it is known, has caused much confusion and ambiguity regarding how and when to apply the law. For the moment, Mongolia is having just criminal code in which uh, there are two articles uh, related to combating human trafficking issues. But there are inconsistencies with the articles, and the judges and prosecutors, also investigators, are facing some obstacles in using the current legislation. Statistics from organizations like the Gender Equality Center, an NGO working on anti-trafficking prevention and victim protection here, suggest that a very low percentage of identified trafficking cases are actually prosecuted under existing laws. One recommendation the TIP report makes for Mongolia is the passage of a specific law to ensure the provision of victim and witness protection. Victim protection is particularly important to anti-trafficking efforts in Mongolia, where criminal cases can only be initiated upon a victim's complaint, and victims play a central role in the prosecution procedure. This unfortunately engenders an environment rife with witness and victim intimidation, and is one of the reasons cited for the low number of prosecuted trafficking cases here. Uh, law practitioners are facing obstacles in uh, uh, dealing with uh, human trafficking uh, cases because victims uh, uh, are refusing or withdrawing the cases. One of the benefits of the new law, proponents say, is that it outlines specific roles for government actors in handling a trafficking case. <laughs> The draft law must be endorsed by the Ministry of Justice and Home Affairs before it can be formally submitted to the Parliament but participants are optimistic. 
for the first time I saw some specific numbers. And also there, there was a draft of the future legislation, you know. That means that uh, uh, homework for us MPs is, has been more or less done. Of course, we have to look at that carefully and uh, um, help to maybe improve the legislation. But a lot of homework was done for us, which is very good. Энэ хөл батлагснаар би энэ хүн хөдөлгөх интервьюг илрүүлэх тасан зөксөг урдсан сэргийг бүх мэдээллийг урт авах энэ хэрэг илэрхийд бол өчтөг хүнтэй бол If passed this would become the first standalone law on human trafficking in the country's history and represent a significant step on the part of the government of Mongolia to address this issue We hope that the government will have more systematic approach to address the human trafficking, like prevention activities, protection of victims, uh, prosecuting of perpetrators, and uh, regulating the partnership among the related organizations.